good youtube mag dog tv we back with another one you guys gotta ignore the background man we up early with the birds 7 a.m let's get this hard work man but coach sap speaks about this upcoming season he also was brutally honest about last season as far as not being able to stop the run so make sure you guys hit that like button man on your way in but anyway i will be reacting to this interview shout out to buffs tv man but let's get to it someone that never wanted to do this i am really uh, addicted to it right now the babies are really giving me a purpose in life and i'm enjoying it seems like they've taken a liking to you here as well and, and just enjoy working with you on daily basis how much have you seen kind of their energy change from maybe when you were a guest last year just kind of seeing how things have shifted in about a year the best thing i wasn't really around here last year except for the first game and then the usc game so i, I won't even compare anything to last year i just love their energy their willingness to come and work and learn and take it from the classroom out to the practice field and the drills we're doing and you know, I tell them, you, you show me how you love this by the way you work. And I'm a fun guy, I think, but I do get them to work. So we, we, they meet me more than halfway, so that's all I ask. A lot of college offenses look different than when you played in college. Is playing D-line any different now than it was when you were in college? No, one three five never changed. Quarterback, three seven five step drop. I mean, it's all the same. Except, you know, back when I played, they'd run it 30 to 40 times and then throw it 20 to 30. Now it's we'll, we'll close it down and throw it 40 to 50 times and choose when we want to run but it's still the same game it's a beautiful game I tell everybody this all the time man the game is gonna always be the same regardless of how many rules they try to come up with you know um how many things they change and all of that the game's gonna always be the same the only thing different i would say now compared to back in the day especially when coach sat was playing is i feel like they was more hungrier you know what i'm saying they had a reason to really really get up and grind and go get it now with these nil deals and these guys getting paid to play in college it's like why you even want to rush to the nfl when some of these guys are making more money than some guys on the nfl practice squad so in my personal opinion it takes away from that you know what i'm saying that uh, you know what i'm saying that uh, you know what i'm saying that you would get from somebody that really is striving to get to the next level but overall the game is still the same what do you see out of your personnel group uh, a lot of depth we know we're trying to develop some depth right now. We got five ends that'll rush. I tell them we got five ends on a two-lane highway, so y'all better fight for those reps because they're they, they going to go fast. They're going to go fast. And inside, we just building depth and, you know, want the guys to be nice and solid because the one thing that I did see last year before I turned the TV off was we couldn't stop the run, and that won't happen with me here. No. Man, you know I'm going to have to pause the video right here. Man, listen, we could not stop the run for nothing. It was so irritating to sit there and watch that not a, let alone this game these games was very very late you know what i'm saying and to see these guys not being able to stop the run not being able to stop the slant route not being able to stop the crossing routes the same stuff was absolutely just painful to watch man and then i had to give you guys my recap after the game 1 2 a.m in the morning speaking about the same stuff every day man every week you know what I'm saying? It absolutely, man, was very, very painful to watch, man. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. So, I believe Coach Sapp. I do believe that that won't happen this season. But it's only so much that he can do. It's all about what these players are going to do. But I love that mentality from Coach Sapp. We're going to earn our right to rush by stopping the run. I talked to Coach Dancy last Monday, and he said, there's no I, guys. It's all about us. How are you implementing an unselfish group and really a unified front? It's a very humbling game that we play. And if you think you can do this all by yourself, I tell them I got a gold jacket and I'll rip it up and tear it up not to have 10 other guys come fight with me because me out on that field is just one guy. And you're just one guy. So we need a unit and a pack to go hunt. And when you pack, a bunch of wild dogs show up in your neighborhood, nobody's coming outside. And that's what I'm telling them. We going to show up like a bunch of wild dogs to the stadium and we're going to hunt. The table is set, let's eat. Coach, I imagine that saying you want to improve in the run game is easier said than done. How do you go about doing that? On a day in day basis. Day out, day in basis. We're going to pull concrete. We're going to make sure we fundamentally sound in our gaps and our hands and our feet and trust in our eyes. That's the most beautiful thing that you, with the D line position. Offensive linemen don't lie. Biggest lie you get told is a flash trap. And I promise you, that's just one. <laughs> you guys are taking practice down to Denver on Friday. What do you think the benefits of that practice will be? Well, we're going to turn the lights on. You know, some of our guys have never been inside the lights. And, you know, you turn those lights off. You know, and I know Boulder going to be good and liquored up for Thursday night. We kick this thing off. So it's going to be nice and loud. And, you know, we have, our defense is going to have to be out there loud. And we're going to need to communicate. And that's what we're going to simulate that Friday night. Warren, Warren Sapp could do, Warren Sapp could do Next anything. Next question. Um, who 
in your room specifically, individually, has stood out the most to you? I wouldn't single out one guy because we're a pack. You know, my five my five years on a two lane highway. That, that's nice and good. And then with the the last two tackles with Buell and uh, the young fella, we'll be six deep. You know, cause Shane and uh, Big Boy, Nani Deuce, <laughs> Bonds, and then we got Kadoji in there, and then working with Buell, and then one more. Who am I forgetting? TC and the other kid. Yeah, I mean we we just mixing and matching them. We got bullets. You get shot with a 38 or a nine millimeter, you pick it. <laughs> well, why coaching for you? Nice well, why coaching? What have you learned from a lot of the guys Lewis and working with him. What have you learned from him about coaching? One more time. What have you learned from Coach Lewis just working with him? Oh. Yeah, from the from the beginning, you know, he came behind me at Miami, so he's one of those guys that was the next baby sap. So, you know, he's been trying to beat me his whole life. So now we're putting it together and see if we can turn them into something that's better than both of us. So we have a great push pull relationship, you know, see the game the same way and just love it. You know, you got a guy that loves the game. We're gonna do this thing. A lot of the guys on both lines have talked about the physicality and the competitiveness in camp. Is that a tone that you guys are trying to set as a staff? Oh no, we believe in the iron sharp as iron. And if you're gonna be the best, you gotta beat the best that we got and then continue. And then we're gonna go at it every day and then he's gonna have a plan and you're gonna have a plan. Like Mike Tyson said, we all got a plan until you get punched in the mouth and that's what that practice is for, to get us ready for this 12 game season and we'll be ready. That's all I be trying to tell you guys, man. Iron sharp and iron, you know what I'm saying? What these guys do in practice is gonna translate over to the game, man. It's very simple, it's just like life. The more you practice at something, the better you're gonna get, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, uh, with these guys competing, you know what I'm saying, especially with, within the trenches, you guys seeing the offensive line putting in a lot of hard work, the defensive line putting in a lot of hard work. You see Khalil Benson going at it with Dayon Hayes. You know what I'm saying? This right here is going to pan out, you know what I'm saying? And so I really, really feel good about this season. As I said before, I have high expectations. Last season was a sense of hope. This season is a sense of expectations. So we're just going to have to wait and see. That you that you gained as a player, did that come flooding back, kind of like riding a bike once you got back on the grass, or did that? <laughs> <laughs> no, coaching is a whole different thing. You know, when I'm leading the champ, this is the first time I'm going for a championship that I'm not leading. You know, and that's a beautiful thing that now I have to relinquish the will and let somebody else drive. It's a beautiful thing to you know watch my kids day in and day out get a little better. I'm watching Shane come alive because now he's trusting the process. You know, when you come and you go slap club rip and they've never done it. I've been in 90 days. I'm taking 120. We'll get it right. You know what I'm saying? So we're just going at it each and every day. And the best part about it is I'm learning every day. They're teaching me too. You know, because the game ain't the same. It's a different game. And the way I play it, I can't play it like that anymore. So we're just mixing and matching and doing it the right. It's 21st century football. So I'm learning. They're learning. And we're going to learn together. What do you say the biggest thing so far you've learned about just how the game has changed? They don't like to communicate. <laughs> you know, I'm a little gracious guy. I love to run my mouth, but my defense goes quiet sometimes. I tell them, hey, a quiet defense is a dumb defense because nobody wants to say anything. Please, talk. Transfer it down, up and down the line. We all know what we're doing. We all wrong, we all right. That's how it goes. That's the defense. We all light up wrong, we all right. But as long as we're playing the defense that's called, we got a shot. You obviously work pretty Man, I say this all the time, man. A defense that communicates is a defense that usually win a lot of football games. And the reason why is because it's like this. If you know some guy is about to run a slant, let's say, for an example, you're running cover three. If the play is cover three, the coach saying such and such is about to happen. But when you actually on the football field, you see the game a lot different than you do from a coach perspective. The coach is coaching from the sideline, so they can only see so much. Believe it or not, they can only see so much regardless of how knowledge above they are, you know what I'm saying? But when you actually on the football field, you see everything. You know what's happening. So when you communicate with your brother, if you run the cover three, of course, you still got to run the play like the coach wanted to design. But you can still tell your, your teammate next to you, like, hey, man, he might run this right here. So be looking for that. You know what I'm saying? So y'all looking for that. And if he run that, bam, turnover. You know what I'm saying? So communication is key. When you're not talking, then it, it just makes you just basically out there like a robot. Or getting your degree to, to have this opportunity to be a GA and join and get into coaching. Is it kind of, have you taken a step back to kind of see how rewarding it's been so far? I know it's early, just, just taking a chance to appreciate kind of all the work you put in to get here. You know what? When me and Prime was first talking about it and it never dawned on me until the babies got to me. When I was in the hot tub, you know, trying to get my hip right and just to work with them a little bit, it just, it flooded me. And they were reaching and grabbing. 
asking questions and I've worked with pros that'll get my phone number and tell me they're coming to Miami and my house is a mile and a half from where they work out and they'll never call. These kids called me 5.30 in the morning. Hey, coach, you gonna come watch tape with me? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, yeah, give me a purpose to get off to the couch. I mean, that, it, trust me. I was on my couch watching MSNBC. I am loving this. I am loving this. What would success look like, like for you as a coach? What's what? What would success look like for you as a coach? The seeds that I put into them blossom into those beautiful mountains that come out in the summer, Colorado summer. You know how those purples and yellows and everything come out? That's what I want after this year. The seeds that me and D. Lou and Dancy put into them, I want to see them blossom into flowers because it's a beautiful thing when you see your kids doing what they're doing. Man, I, I mean, man, that's a very good interview right there, man. As I said before, of Coach Sap, you know, keeping it a buck. If you guys like the video, man, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I've been saying it all along, though, man. As I said before, the talk is over with. You know, all that talking during the offseason, going back and forth with certain content creators and media guys and all that, that ish is over with. Now it's about what you do on the football field. You know what I'm saying? And so, and I'm speaking specifically to the players. Not the coaches, but I do feel like this season it's going to rely on the coaches because the roster is, 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 is as good as it can get. It is as good as it's going to be, in my personal opinion. I don't feel like this roster is going to be way better next season. You know, we have the best quarterback as far as talent-wise that you probably would ever see in Shadur Sanders. Regardless if we go get a Juju Lewis, he won't be a Shadur, Shadur Sanders. You know, the best two-way star in Travis Hunter that you will ever see ever again. You know what I'm saying? The offensive line has improved. The defensive line has improved. We have positional coaches that are just, I mean, great, great coaches. It's all going to rely on the coaches. You know what I'm saying? And so drop in the comments and let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Hit that like button, man. Make sure you guys hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to the channel. And uh, until next time.